Welcome to the Academy of Esports podcast. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. I'm here with Tom Newton. He is the Director of Operations for EFUSE. Tom, thank you very much for being on the Academy of Esports podcast. Yeah, thanks, James. Really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Yeah, uh, eFuse. It is something that maybe a lot of educators or scholar gamers don't know anything about, um, but I know I have delved in a little bit into eFuse and, and actually set up my profile. Why don't you give everybody here who's listening the opportunity to find out from you directly rather than me trying to butcher through what it is, what eFuse is all about? Yeah, absolutely. So EFU started in the in August of 2018, and it really was born out of a realization that our founder, Matt Benson, came to after he wrote a 150-page report on the esports and gaming industry. And what he found throughout his research was that there were a lot of opportunities coming onto the scene as the industry was growing, mm -hmm. but the visibility to those opportunities it was kind of... Um, it was kind of masked, right? So you kind of had to be in the industry. You had to know somebody um, in order to get access. And mm -hmm. so he started to develop a platform that would connect people with opportunities. And that's great. Um, you know, that's a great idea. There's a market for that. But it doesn't really incentivize repeat visits to the site, right? So you may go, you want to get a job maybe once every five years or something like that. You go to college once. Mm -hmm. uh, you apply for a scholarship once. And kind of ancillary to this was also, you know, gamers have developed uh, a really rich social experience for each other and themselves online. Mm -hmm. But there was no one place to kind of express that. So there's Twitter, there's Twitch, there's YouTube, there's Mixer, there's a lot of different things out there. And so what eFuse kind of evolved into and really what it is now is this social and professional hub for esports and gaming. Uh, and that's got a few components. I can dive into those if you think your listeners would would want to hear about that. Well, to put it in, to see if if what I, my take on it is. To me, it reminds me a lot of LinkedIn meets Facebook. Sure. With a lot. Yeah, we've heard that. I think a lot more LinkedIn than Facebook, but certainly to me, it feels like it's more like I'm making professional connections than just sharing my social life. Yeah, we've heard a comparison to LinkedIn, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, because mm -hmm. Twitter's a big gamer social platform right now, but. Mm -hmm. What we've really been able to do because we're niche, because we know that the people on our platform are gamers, we cut through a lot of the white noise that exists on those other platforms that may not be gamer related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I've noticed that as well, too, as, as you, you've just come out of your closed beta. And now I believe you're an open beta now, correct? Yeah. So yep, this, so this is a platform it. that anybody now before you had to be on a waiting list and now you can basically go on there and sign up and, and create your po profile at this time, correct? Yep. Yeah. Anyone can go to efuse.gg and they can create their profile and start interacting on the site. And yeah, it's open to everybody. So you said you wanted to go into some of the different areas about efuse where it's it's different than just a regular LinkedIn where it cuts out the white noise. What else do you have to share about it? Yeah. So central to the platform is what we call our gamer portfolio. And there it's really your gamer resume. Mm -hmm. uh, you can connect all your social accounts. You can connect your Twitter, or sorry, your your Twitch, your YouTube, your Mixer, and you can actually stream directly from you or from eFuse. So if you're streaming on Twitch, if you're streaming on Mixer, we'll pull that stream in, and people can watch it from eFuse, and and that'll count as a viewer as well. So you're not losing out. Uh, in that sense, you can connect your clips from your YouTube. You can create a highlight reel that you can display on your portfolio, mm -hmm. and then you can connect a bunch of your stats in your games. So we have a few games on there now. I think we have four. We've got Rocket League coming soon. We're going to have Overwatch, PUBG, and every every few weeks we're going to be adding new games. So, you know, if your game isn't on there right now, if the game that you play mostly isn't on there now, it will be soon. Yeah, and if you go on to efuse.gg slash esports underscore czar, you can pull up my profile and find that I am an absolute... It was embarrassing when I pulled in my... Uh, my Fortnite statistics. Um, it, 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 <laughs> if you, if anybody wants a good laugh, go look and, and see my Fortnite statistics and you'll understand why I am good doing this, but I am not the person you want to have on your esports teams at all. I will happily do all of your other work, but yeah, the gamer part is definitely not for me. So, well, and that's the thing though, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's something for everyone on the site. So, well, what I did like was, um, for example, up at the top of my profile, I was able to 
choose one video I could embed. That's kind of like my greeting video or in your, you know, you may say that might be where you put your highlight. Or for some of our scholar gamers, one of the things that the college coaches said they were looking for was they didn't necessarily want a highlight video, but they wanted to have a three to five minute clip of you in game hearing, being able to hear your voice calls, your voice commands, and even being able to do a little analysis of your gameplay. So I could understand where, again, if you're a high school student or a college student who's looking to either get recruited pro or with a, with a, with a college team, that becomes a valuable connection tool as well because it's right there front and center. You don't have to tell somebody to go somewhere else to find your information. Yeah, it's a lot like a huddle in that way and that, you know, huddle is this big platform for more traditional sports, NBA, uh, basketball, football. You know, if you're trying to go pro or get into college, that's where that's where schools are going to go to see your highlight clips. And now schools will be able to go to eFuse to see a lot of those same similar things for eSports. And a couple of weeks ago, I had uh, Tyrell Appleton on the podcast. I know he's a big eFuse uh, uh, proponent. He's one. I think he's on your advisory board. And it yeah. seems like you all have done a really good job of trying to at least get the the college kids involved. Again, looking at things from a high school perspective, and we, you and I chatted before uh, the podcast, uh, one of the concerns that I had was how do I, as a high school leader, start to help get my kids connected to colleges? And then how do I build within eFuse this opportunity for kids to, to so that I can see who's making connections with whom and and making sure that their their data privacy is secure and you know that they're not just making weird connections with pros who are just going to exploit them. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I'll start with the connection question. Sure. Uh primarily, you know, how do you connect to colleges? Right now we've developed a feature and it's it's brand new to the site, but you're actually able to create an organization. Mm-hmm. Uh so you can actually create um uh like you I know, could have your the Racine, high school I could have like the Racine Unified High School district exactly esports teams okay right and you can invite your students to become members um we do say you know it's it's for people who are 13 and up um though high schoolers should fit that age range pretty well Mm -hmm. um you can also uh you can message now one-to-one so if you're looking to make connections in colleges or to other colleges you can message their administration their coaches that are on efuse directly get plugged in build relationships that way Mm -hmm. um as far as data privacy is concerned, that's really important to us. Um, we don't right now. I know one thing you were really concerned with was advertisements. Yeah, so target, targeted advertisements, which is something I would almost pay a premium for if we could avoid anything like that. And I don't yeah, see and any ad, and I don't see any advertisements now on the site. Right. And, and so we don't have advertisements at the moment so that, you know, once that becomes a feature and once we start rolling those out, we'll, and even beforehand, we'll have conversations with high schools and high school administrators to mm-hmm. figure out how exactly they feel we could best protect the privacy of their students. Um, and if that is implementing a solution where you guys pay for, um, you know, a premium version that doesn't have ads, you know, we're totally open to that. Uh, but right now, don't have any specific solutions implemented just because we don't have ads on the site. So right now, like you said, the, 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 the site is in beta. Uh, the platform is in beta. Things can change, obviously. Um, so and, and if I was interested in setting up an organization, I know I think I sent I might have sent a trouble ticket or a, a help ticket in on that. How how would I if I wanted to take a step in here and say, you know what, let's try this out with some of my kids on a pilot basis. How could I go ahead and create an organization? So right now you'd have to, and and, and we haven't been admittedly very transparent about this up to this point just because it's a relatively new feature. But if you message one of um, our admins, so if you message Community Carl via the Messenger app on the on the site, Mm -hmm. you should be able to you should be able to get access from him. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can message me directly on LinkedIn, Tom Newton. Um, or any one of the other eFuse members, uh, and we can we can see if we can get you set up with something like that. Um, you, for you specifically, James, I'd love to get you set up after this podcast on there. Um, but right now, that's a process. It's it, it will open up, and it'll be a feature that's available to everybody soon. But mm. just because it's kind of in a testing phase at the moment, we've restricted access to it. Well, and that that makes absolute total sense. Again, this is all beta, and and you know it's it, it's always hard when you expand very quickly and then you can support none of it. Uh, <laughs> it's right. You know, we don't, you don't want to have something that becomes so unwieldy so quickly and then you have to shut it off. Uh, I completely understand that. In fact, 
even in esports right now, one of the things that we're dealing with in our associations is there's been a rush to add games uh, to you know different associations and leagues. And what we're finding now is that um, our general managers and our coaches um, can definitely get to feel overwhelmed very quickly with the number of games that they have to be able to support, what IT has to be able to support, licensing, computer, you know, computer access, things like that. I want to make sure too that what when we're looking at this kind of a platform, and I and I agree that that connecting with colleges right now is just painfully hard in some cases. It's it's um, a platform like this is very necessary. I think you said it at, at before when eFuse was first kind of uh, the idea was was grown. I think it was your you were first a site where you could just make a connection to a college and then that was it. You you, you know kids pretty much stopped using the platform after that. Is that correct? That was the idea. We never actually released it before gotcha. this closed beta. So we didn't necessarily validate that. So instead of, you know, risking, you know, people coming on the site, and never using it again, developing a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. I think we did it the right way in developing community partnerships to help push the platform and then, you know, try and build trust in the community from a grassroots level. Um, and, and in part by pr providing the support features on the site that do allow people to connect on a more consistent basis. So walk me through if I'm a if I'm a scholar gamer, if I'm a student who's looking to connect to a college, um, walk us through what that process may look like from their end. Uh, not necessarily that the college is contacting them directly, but they're interested in a college. How does that process work right now? Uh, so eFuse doesn't necessarily facilitate the connection between the students and the colleges. That's definitely something that's, that could happen, but we're not, you know, we don't have an active automatic process mm -hmm. that does that for students. But okay. if a student wanted to get involved with a college, um, especially in a varsity program, I would reach out specifically to whoever the head of their program is, even another student that might be in the program. Mm -hmm. Um, take a tour of the college, learn about that school first, find out if it's a place you even want to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then find the people who are currently in their esports program and talk to them about it. That would be my suggestion. Okay. So right now, just right now, and again, things can change as the beta grows and things are tweaked right now. There is, I guess what I'm trying to get at is if, a, if one of my students is able to make a connection to a college team, I want to make sure that me as the director of the program or the coach is aware that they're trying to connect to the college. Uh, we, we don't, you know, one of the things I, I have talked about with other people is, for example, I'm not a fan of the NCAA. And um, personally, I think that I would wish the Big Ten would just kind of pull out and go do their own thing. But the NCAA is really good about saying, here's your window to recruit. Here is the how many con, how many contacts you can have with a potential recruit. Um, they have some really good rules about that. Right now, with esports in colleges, it's almost like who do you know and and the and and almost like the randomness. Or you know, a kid went to a tournament somewhere and a college just happened to be there and they make the connection that way. Uh, what is the long term, I guess, thoughts around that with eFuse? Does eFuse have a plan about how to maybe formalize this a bit more, or is this still going to be more of the uh, the social connections and, and kind of happen chance about how active somebody is on the platform. Yeah. I mean, right now it's about activity on the platform and mm -hmm. being able to, you know, make those organic connections yourself. But, you know, we can't actually create a process that all the colleges are going to follow, right? Sure. Like NACE for, for instance, um, you know, NACE has tried to do things like that, but in the end you see that colleges have so much power and being able to step away from that relationship that it doesn't work, mm -hmm. uh, not for esports anyways. And I don't know that we're ever going to see a more formal process similar to the NCAA in esports. Mm -hmm. um, I think that works to the benefit of some people uh, just because there's a little bit more democratization in being able to reach out by yourself mm -hmm. um, to these colleges. And then the colleges are able to reach out who they want to reach out to. But what eFuse is trying to do is just promote transparency and visibility, right? So your portfolio, supposedly, if you're trying to get into a college for esports, would have those highlight clips, would have those things that the colleges want to see. And, you know, you would identify yourself on the platform as a student looking mm -hmm. for a team in school. Um, similarly, we would expect colleges to go out and 
um, you know, recruit based on what is available on the eFuse platform. Mm -hmm. But as far as formalizing a process, that right now we don't see as our role. Sure. And, and, and that's OK, because I, and I appreciate the honesty about that, because, you know, one of the things, too, that we try to impart on our kids, at least in my district, is, you know, owning your digital footprint, cultivating that that garden, if you will, so that um, when people look at you online, that they are, they know what they're getting into and and actually taking some time to think about how you present yourself in, in, a, in a public online space. So with eFuse, if 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 our kids are serious about you know, promoting their platform, promoting their brand, pr pr promoting their style of play and, and looking for colleges. I do like that it isn't necessarily just um, kids or a company just putting up their, you know, their basic information and saying, come get them, which I know in some cases, a lot of there's a few companies out there that do handle athletic recruiting and they've tried to jump into esports and it's a lot it's a lot of that it's like here's a kid who's interested. They paid us money and here's their stats and go. You can run recruit them. So, yeah, and there's there's no charge on EFIs uh, right. to put that stuff up on your portfolio. So it's completely free um, right now. It's completely free for colleges and for students. So you're not actually paying any fee to, to display your talent and your skills. And so um, I think that goes a long way in trying to kind of democratize the process as well. Well, Tom, I really appreciate you taking the time to take us through what EFUSE is what the potential is around your company's product. Is there anything else you wish to, you wish to uh, share or pitch about eFuse? Yeah, I mean, we're in the process of developing a scholastic board as well. So a board of individuals who, um, you know, we can look to in the high school scene to look, you know, support us and that we can support. So we want to do things. Um, we don't want to tell people what to do, right? Mm -hmm. We want to we want to get the information from individuals like you, from colleges, from students, learn what's going to serve them best and then implement solutions that are going to be helpful to them. Um, and so just want to put that out there that we're really trying to develop this platform with the community in mind first. It's not eFuse telling people how things should be. It's us trying to learn how people want it to be. Well, I do invite uh, everybody now that the beta is open to go on to eFuse.gg to create your account um, and get educated about what this platform looks like and do send questions. Tom and his team have been very uh, open and candid about uh, the discussion. And again, if, if there's anything that you feel like you have questions about, about the platform or about student privacy or, or how your student data is handled, I would absolutely uh, recommend that you reach out. Um, I know that, uh, like I said, I've been sniffing around on the platform. I've been testing it out, seeing what, what the impact is. And uh, yeah, I'd be very interested to check out that organizations feature and see what that looks like with some of the uh, uh, pilot students that I may um, ask to try to try this out as well. So, yeah, absolutely. So, Tom Newton, thanks so much for being on the Academy of Esports podcast. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, James. Appreciate being on. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture, diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter, at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N. And through the Academy of Esports account, at T-A-O Esports. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash taoesports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.